Okay, we begin the biblical truth of our hymns. My Jesus, I Love Thee. Written by William R. Featherstone. Music, Adder, Adderham J. Gordon. Featherstone was believed to have written this poem at the age of either 12 or 16 years old. In 1876, Adam Gordon used the poem as lyrics for a hymn. Not much is known about Featherstone, except that he attended a Methodist church in Montreal, that he was young when he wrote the poem, again, 12, 16 years old, and he died just a mere 27 years old. A stanza omitted in the United Methodist Hymnal appears as the third stanza in many hymnals. So the third one's gone. This stanza has the earmarks of 19th century romantic rom, romantic comedy with a focus on death. The final stanza, alluding to mansions of glory, John 14, 2, in heaven serves the same purpose in a more positive way. Somehow the poem made its way into England where it was published unknown with no name in the London hymn book two years later. Adoram Judson Gordon, who was compiling a Baptist hymn book like Featherstorm's text, but decided needed better tune than that one that was used in the London hymn book. So he wrote a new tune for it with a pub which is which he published in a service song of the Baptist churches. This is the same tune that's still used today. So, let's get into it. My Jesus. Already, great. We haven't seen many hymns that we study about with Jesus. Second word, Jesus. I like that. Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. John 21, 15. Words of Peter. My Jesus. I love thee. Okay, we're running we're running to a kind of problem here. Everybody stand up or everybody open up their hymnal in church, open to my Jesus, I love thee. Lost, unsaved, worldly Christian. And you got them singing, My Jesus, I love thee. Now, I can sing it, my Jesus. I love the Lord. I try to do right. I confess my sins. I am a sinner, saved by grace, everything by Jesus Christ alone. I can name some people that would this hymn would be sung in a church, and I would doubt they say, I love thee. And if they were to sing, my Jesus, I love thee, and they don't, that's a lie. Lies are sins. Thou shalt not bear false witness. I know thou art mine. It's true for a saved Christian loving the Lord. Not true for an atheist. Not true for an evolutionist. Not true for a Catholic. Not true for a Jehovah Witness. For thee... All the follies of sin I resign. That's hard sometimes. But sin is an enemy, is an anger to God when we sin. It breaks off our fellowship with God when we sin. We need to lie down our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9. If we, are, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We've got that First John 1, 9 when we do sin. For all of sin comes short of glory of God, even save people. What a remarkable thing this song says, we love Jesus. He is mine, but yet we are defiled. We are broken. My gracious Redeemer, capital R. My Savior, capital S, art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Again, Jesus. Four stanzas. 
Five times, Jesus. First stanza, who is he? He's the one that I love. Who is he? He's the one that takes our sin. I'm the sinner. Who is he when I sin? He's my redeemer. He's my savior. Do you love him now? Maybe you loved him yesterday. Maybe troubles and troubles and problems have come up. Do you love him now? Is he your soul one? Are you looking for the blessed hope? Are you wanting? To love Jesus is want to see Jesus now. Besides and above everything else. That's the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus is when we do sin. We are sorry. We are broken. And we feel vile and dirty and wicked. And only by being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ again, confessing our sins. I love thee because thou hast first loved me. Well, look at that. That's scripture. First John. No man can know love except he knows God, which the Bible says God is love. You can't say I love you to anybody and not know God. Because God is love. And if God is love, and he is, the Bible says he is. And you don't know God. You don't know love. And the greatest love of all is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When wretched, vile, sinning men, without hope, without God, God says, I love you. I will go. I will suffer. I'll be broken. I'll be whipped. I'll bleed. And I'll die for you. That's love. Especially when God is angry with our sins. God. Who they will say, you know, he hates sin but loves the sinner. No, no, no. That may sound good to put on a wall, but it's not true because God is angry with the sinner. God is angry with sin. If God loved the sinner, he would cast him off in hell. God's, God's, not, God's long suffering is not willing that any should perish, but yet, yeah, if they choose to sin, they choose to rebel against his word. He is holy. He says, be holy, for I am holy. And purchase my pardon on Calvary's tree. Not of works, please any man both. There's nothing I can do. Acts 20:28 20, says the blood of God. God's blood purchased the church. There is nothing there will be never and cannot ever be anything but the blood of Jesus Christ for the sinning soul. There is nothing that can redeem you but the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of God. It has to be God's blood. And it has to be Jesus' blood, which are one and one. And it's found Calvary Street. No other place on this earth was salvation ever met but upon a cross upon Calvary. By God. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. And they were placed there by the Roman soldiers in mockery. King, oh hell king. Ah, ah, the king we're going to kill today. Ah, the king of the Jews. Ah. And yet those thorns were Genesis 3, the curse of man's sin. The curse when God said, don't eat of that fruit, and he ate of that fruit. And he says, thorns and thistles shall grow. With the brow of the sweat of thy brow, are you going to work? Are you going to return back to the dust and dirt that thou art? And yet those thorns that were placed on his, crown, on his head, they were the representation of the crowns of thorns of curse placed upon man. That curse was put upon Jesus Christ that I may have eternal life. And you may have it also. If ever I loved thee, my Jesus is now. You think often what the sufferings, you think about the blood of God pouring down Jesus' face. Does it remind you to love God more? Does it remind you not to sin? Does it remind you to go out and do what he tells you to do? 
Does it remind you, if you really love Jesus now, to be a better child of God? If I love Jesus now, does it make you want to be purer and cleaner, bride? Does it? That's what loving Jesus now is. Now this verse, the stanza three, it says it's not in the, the what did I say, what, the Methodist? Let me check my note here again. Uh, stanza three, a United Methodist hymnal. It's not here. So you would skip, this would not be in the hymnal. Never mind. All right, we're going to sing stanzas one, two, and four. I've been in Baptist churches like that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But three is totally removed, erased. I'll love thee in life. What's wrong with that? You know, my wife is saying, I'll tell her, you know what? I have one love that's greater than her. She don't get angry. She don't get jealous. She knows it's Jesus. That's a greater look. I've been married twice. My first wife died. But I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got two children. I love them. One seriously done me wrong. It repented and got right. Thank the Lord. But I'll love thee in life. Life begins at 50. Life begins over the hill. No. I love thee in life. Loving and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you living for? Are you living for retirement? Are you living for the executive office? Are you living for the executive washroom? Are you living to get the Alexis or the Ford? Or are you living to get your stocks on high? I'll love thee in life. They got the saying they put on, on spare tires, life is good. What a stupid place to put that. On something that is going to flatten that you're going to have to change. <laughs> In your entire life, do you love the Lord? It's saying, I'll love thee in life. To the day I die, I love you. That's a commitment. Again, if you've got lost people in church, you're going to have to sing a commitment to God that they don't even believe? That's a lie. That's a false thing. What about a worldly Christian? That skips church for a softball. That will, oh, I, I listen, I've heard Christians say before, we can't go to church this week because the American Idol's finals was way back when. I'll love thee in life, but I can't love you during a baseball game. I can't love you when something else is more important. I will love thee in death. Oh, it's if it's the kind of death that, you know, you close your eyes, you go to sleep, close your eyes, and you wake up absent from the body present with the Lord. What about torture? What about a painful death? What about backsliding? We don't know what life holds tomorrow. There are Christians today with third degree burns. Any part of the body, third degree burn, serious pain. There are Christians being tortured today by religions. And this third stanza that is removed from the Methodist is a lifelong commitment that while I am breathing and when I take my last breath, it will be for the love of Jesus Christ. What is wrong with that, friends? If you can say I do to a woman or a man that you're going to marry at an altar, if you can make a pledge, why can't you have I love thee in life and I will love thee in death? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's an oath. And that stanza needs to be seriously sung. 
by serious individuals that know what they are singing. Because if you're holding a worldly or lost man, I'll love thee in life and I will love thee in death. They have marked their words before God. Every idle word man shall give an account thereof, Jesus said. Well, Jesus, when did I say I love you in life? When did I say I love you when I die? When that church you visited said, my Jesus, I love thee, stanza three. How's that? And praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. Life. As long as I am able to breathe and still alive, my praise will go to Jesus Christ and God the Father. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now the praise. You know, the pain, the suffering, the sorrows, the loneliness, the breaking down, the troubles, the problems. I'll praise thee now. In everything give God praise. In everything give God thanksgiving. Not just the good, as well as the bad. Give God the praise. Why is that taken out? Why is that stanza removed from the Methodist hymn book? If I got that right. Let me check that again. I don't want to misquote it. But religion, do I? Yeah, United Methodists. Remove that. That's an oath to God, and I hope you can sing that with your heart. I hope you can not only sing it, but I hope you can say it with words. That is saying God's going to take care of me as he's always taking care of me. In fact, there's one aspect of my life I always worry about, maybe a couple, but one I really can't just lay in God's hand without me taking it back. And yet, yesterday, and before he's taken care of me and been blessed and I thank him and say when the death dew lies cold on my brow when death finally happens if the Lord is a terry if the Lord is a terry the raptures that happen after you die if ever I love thee my Jesus does not are you going to praise and love the Lord Jesus Christ every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year? No matter what comes by your way, good or bad, the greatest or the rottenness, whether you live or you die, whether your breath is, is being paused to be giving you life, you're in an asthmatic condition spiritually or physically you can't get that breath it's long for coming are you still going to praise God you still going to give God the, the glory that stanza three is removed why on earth somebody afraid of death somebody afraid of committing their lives to God in mansions of glory and endless delight I was in a church one time they quoted room they changed John 14 too for rooms. I guess you can't sing, my Jesus, I love thee, if you've got a perverse Bible. Because the King James Bible says mansions of glory and endless delight. Oh, wait till we get the glory. There's no more end. There's no more time. It's forever. If ever I adore, if ever, no, excuse me. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. It's all about you. Imagine praising God as a sinless creation bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Imagine. Imagine what we can praise God in sinless perfection that we don't have today. I don't have sinless perfection. I've got tears. I've got worries. I've got troubles. I've got problems. I've got cloudy and dark days I got storms on the sea I got times I cry out to Jesus help and I always is, is calling out to Jesus a glory it's a fear 
But when all the storms are gone and all the dread is, is, is by and by it. When without pain we can worship God in the Son Jesus Christ. And sing in thy praises before thee. One day we're going to sing the hymns. I don't know if it's going to be these hymns. Some of the hymns I guarantee are not going to be in heaven. But when we do get before the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, saved all those that are saved, none that are lost, we've all been to the judgment seat of Christ, then we can honestly sing, If ever I loved thee, my Jesus is now. That can't be sung by everybody today. That is not sung by everybody today. It's just mere words. Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. That's the words of Peter. John 21, 15. Can you rightfully say that's your verse today? Can you say to the Lord honestly without having to repent? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Or do you love something else? Is there something else? Then you need to repent and get right. And it, but like I said, we're all sinners. We all repent. We're not perfect. Yeah, can you take a wonderful hymn like this and sing it with glory to God? Maybe with tears when you have failed. Maybe bring to a sin that you have not put under the blood. And maybe you put it under the blood and say, Lord, I can get the stanza two, clean and washed. By the time I get to stanza three, which is not in a church, oh, Lord God, I, I give you that promise, but I'm going to fail, Lord. I need you help. And by the time we get to stanza four, Lord, wait, God, Lord, God, wait till we get to heaven. Wait till we get to heaven when we do it without sin. We do it in a new body. We do it before you, in front of you, forever and ever. Glory to God.